Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Chess is the ultimate game. Win, and you want to play more. Lose, and you still want to play more of it. It's a game of addiction, and many of us spend hours playing. One way to improve is to learn those openings. Another way to get better is to be able to solve puzzles, random puzzles. There are everywhere. One such puzzle is this one, Chess Puzzle Blitz. It's brand new. I introduced it in the last Tata game I featured. It's very simple to use. You, you can easily download it on your iPhone, iPad, and this is also available on Android. You can play against different people and compare how you do these programs biggest feature is not only the ability to play against different players, but it's all about your accomplishment. If you submit your final score, and once this program moves out of its testing stages, you will be able to also earn money with this application being absolutely free to download. This is what you call a win-win. In this exercise, which I showed before, these two players are competing on the same task. And the one who wins is also the one who finishes the task first. What you see here are checkmate exercises. Even if you make a mistake, the program lets you know and you will be allowed to take back and retry. Every time you complete the puzzle, a tick is added to the top and this is how you would compare to others. The puzzle also lets you know in how many moves you get to that checkmate. Guys, I'm serious. What else do you need if you want to earn money? When Chess Puzzle Blitz comes out of his testing stages, I would let you know. The next big event has to be the FIDE candidates. It starts in March and there are eight people who will try it out for the last time before we know who's going to meet Magnus for the 2020 WCC. In order of the ranking, we have Fabi, Dingli Ren, then it's Grichuk. Number four is Nepo, five is Anish Giri, six is Rajabov, Seven is Wang Hao, and the last person is the Dark Horse, Alex Sinko, who is the biggest surprise. The only person Magnus does not really want to be playing against is this guy. And I have a feeling here. Don't say I said nothing about it. And what? Ten months went in advance of this championship. Today's game is absolutely fantastic. You know, to experience it, we need to go back to 2010. And boy, doesn't time fly. It's a Vikan Say game, and we also need to relegate to what was known to have been Group B in chorus. It's the round six game between Dita Nisipianu and Wesley So. If you're a King's Indian type of player, this might be right up your street. Dita White kicked it off with the most robust move there is. It's all about this first knight move to f3, the red c, which can lead to absolutely anything. And this is what makes the first move so attractive. d5 was met by this pawn push, steering the game away from all sorts of lines. This g3 is a King's Indian attack. Has anyone heard of the Yugoslav? The Keras pins this knight, and the Yugoslav is all about this move to c6. If West was going to go for any one of these two responses, which one would you think he would go for and why? At the time, Wesley was playing catch up, 
and was not as strong as the piano was. The small gap in their respective elos should not play a role, a big role, in how the game unfolds. And yet it does. Wesley here responded with the Yugoslav to be able to deal when Dieter ghettos. Though not necessary, Dieter does Fianghetto and do expect both sides to simply develop their pieces. Knight of six, that two castles, and this is how Wesley answers. So whether you go for the carers and progress to the type of Yugoslav or go about it in the way Wesley does, nothing really changes. Many people normally chase after this bishop. And many others choose to attack this bishop in this way. If you don't like bishop e6, or even something like h5, you may also go for something like bishop h5. Bishop h5, yeah, that's right. Knight d7 is also playable. If you don't mind going through the option of dropping the bishop for the knight, this could also be a very viable picture. Those who play this variation may prefer to have the black pieces cause it appears black has developed far more pieces than white. Developing your pieces is one thing, but how solid are you? Go for a move like this and you immediately note a problem. It's all about the discovery on this knight. H5 drops a full pawn in the center. B7 is next. And this, in three words, does not work. If you retreat the threatened knight to safety, once this pawn is removed, there is still a problem in deciding how to capture. If you use the knight, if you chase after him, get him to return to f6, and once you go d4, e6, knight c3, should be seven, and if one side is far better than the other, all the credit goes to white. White's pieces are far more developed, far more flexible, and far better positioned. Coming back, this special move to g4 looks quite aggressive, but essentially is harmless. Attack him with the pawn, and if you don't trade, retreat to h5, or even worse, e6 and you would have lost a very valuable tempo. Nisipianu went for something riskier here. This is what he chose to play. Though there is absolutely nothing wrong taking, if knight a3 and b5, you will get into trouble. It's all about creating a very strong attack, and this knight jump up the board is extremely powerful. Queen b6 stop every single plan and plot against the queen side, but after a move such as this one, e6 also implies one defensive move after the other. If you take, black can easily get rid of the knight, castles, and if not h3, white may want to go chasing after the queen. Queen a6 protecting the pawn on c6, and now h3. And once the bishop retreats to this outpost, you may wish to pursue Mr. Bishop. Should be four takes and takes, and once you get the queen to go after this knight, should you retreat to this outpost? What do you think of this development? Knight h5, queen g4, and if g6, which is the only way to keep this knight alive, what about this bishop repositioning? It's pretty deep. Rook e8 gets you buried. Let's try and work this one out. This queen response. Queen b7 and takes on b5. There is no way black comes out of this one in one piece. Knight g7 runs into knight g4. King h8, and if bishop d4, if you take this pawn with the queen, just eliminate this pawn, and that checkmate comes in in no time. Rook g8, knight f6 is very close. Even if you drop this pawn with a check, what happens after king h2? Queen f4 check, king g2, and we are getting rid of 
This Peugeot also drops again because of this checkmate on the back rank. And let's hear it. The only move here Black has is Knight D7. But once you get rid of the Knight, what happens after this initiative? Which is better move to go for. Queen takes A7 or Queen takes C6. Queen takes C6, drop this bishop. But when Mr. Rug also comes off, it's quite safe to say White has a very comfortable lead. Now, this is one very deep variation of many and starts as early as move five. Wesley had no intention of removing this guy from the aim and went for this response. After d3 and knight d7, it was Nisipianu the one who chose to remove a pawn. And once the capture was made in this way, we saw knight c3, bishop d6, and here Nisipianu basically had enough of this bishop, sitting on g4, and decided to attack him. Given the bishop's access to the light squares is very limited, Wesley traded, which also allowed Wesley to get his king to safety. e4 opening up, or trying to open up, and Wesley does trade here. So the problem is the bishop's position on d6, which exposes him to the queen. What does a move like knight e5 do? Bishop g2, bishop b4, and we have all sorts of things happening. For starters, we have bishop f4. A second option is something like bishop g5. A third option to go for is to try this queen move to b3. If we go through all these three different options, we may stay here longer than necessary. Let's try a new one, shall we? And let's see where this bishop g5 initiative takes us. If queen a5, this is the idea, takes and takes, which is a must. And though you can easily remove the knight on c3, wait a minute, it's white to move here. Rook c1 will be met by rook c8. But what happens if you use this rook to chase after the queen? If queen e2, there is now rook a c8. And if you don't develop a headache, you would at least be dizzy by now. Coming back, Wesley played it more practically. He repositioned his bishop to this outpost. Nisipianu got his own bishop to retreat to the adjacent square. And once this rook appeared on c8, you can choose to cover or go for another move to open up the game completely. What do you think Dieter do here? This is what he designed to do. When Wesley took on c3, is there a problem if you take using the rook? Though, it doesn't appear to be something out of the ordinary. If you do, Wesley does not take, but goes for this course of action. Rook d1 getting this rook a bit more active got in this type of answer. If you instead eliminate this pawn on c3 with the rook, I can easily go for this pin. And though it appears it's game over, this is far from the truth. Rook c2 is just in time because this will be a queen for a queen and the game still looks equal. By the way, black is up by full pawn, but what you see here is by no means over. Returning to the game, after e5, the problem with the move such as this, can anyone see what is going on? This bishop on g2 is now reduced to basically nothing. And the only way to get him to become active is to reroot him. Dieter was looking at something else. He pushed on with this guy. And since this pawn remained on the board, West decided to get him out of his misery. How did he do this? Now that we know rook takes also works, Wesley used the queen to take. If you take with the rook, the queen time was likely to also disappear and the likelihood of a draw increases. But taking with the queen 
It's a completely different variation. With the threat on this corner rook, this is how the piano moved on. Not only the corner rook is protected, but this bishop reposition to a3 has the bishop all covered and creates a renewed threat on this black rook. Rook e8 led to h4, and not only this game is played to perfection, but it has absolutely no gaps to explore. What the players have here are ideas. If you, for example, chase after the queen, queen d4, bishop b2, and queen b4, and again the game is played on. Coming back after h4, Wesley closed in the bishop. At the same time, threatens this pawn on a4. Rook c1, launching a vicious attack on the queen. Got Wesley in with this response. And talking of risky moves, what followed was extremely risky. Does anyone want to have an educated guess? You don't need to look far, but the very diagram on the thumbnail is exactly the same position. See, Piano pins his own queen, but can you work out if what you see here works? What happens if you expose the queen for this knight retreat? Does it work? And for what side? If queen f1, the knight will find this outpost on d4. And should the rooks come off? Bishop b2, and because of this extremely badly positioned bishop on g2, white would always be playing catch up. If you now centralize the queen, which at the same time attacks this bishop, rest assured, white's problems seem to intensify. However, if we come back. What if you hand over the queen for the two rooks? We know knight f8 gets you instantly checkmated, and let's hear it. But black has this knight move to save the day. The queen on a5 is good enough and strong enough to save black from getting checkmated. But there is a but, and a big one too. It's all about this bishop attack, and it's as good as lights out. You do have a queen, but even she will not be able to deal with what you have going against you. H6, opening up an escape path, will have this knight come off. And right now, both ways work. If the bishop takes, even this looks stronger. Queen before drops the big lady through either bishop a5, much better bishop e7 because you no longer have queen f8 not that this matters too much if you got a queen a6 instead you can still eliminate this knight and because of this discovered check what you will have is the rook pair and the bishop pair against a long queen and there is no contest here so coming back we're not exposing the queen will backfire wesley here had no choice but to go it all defensive. This is what he did, and this is how his piano responds. This attack on the queen is forcing. Queen back led to the two queens to depart, and before going for a bishop escape, these two rooks also went. Bishop d6 was another critical type of response, but this is such a no brainer. Wesley will drop a pawn unless he goes rook e8. He opted for another type of initiative. This was a movie he went for and really doesn't care about the welfare of this pawn on e5. If e5 comes off, this guy on e4 additionally goes. Whether you like it or not, this bishop on g2 springs to life. Coming back, this is not what we saw. Mr. Piano had something else cooking. He kept his knight hostage through this rook move. And this one is now tight, very tight. The only move to save the game was this knight repositioning, and this is exactly how Wesley played it. Now, this game will need to be played until the very end. See, Piano tried some very intriguing combinations, and up to this point in the game, everything he threw at Wesley, Wesley was forced to defend, and so far, 
you did this to perfection. Frustration is often a feeling that forces you to do things that are not rational. See, Piano, no doubt, was beginning to feel frustrated. What he did here was to go for this special attack. Good or bad, guys, and just forget the definition I gave you to explain the word frustration. It normally implies this special move to H3 is catastrophic. It was a very sound move, though, and very well calculated attack. If rook d8, there is bishop c7, and if you answer with rook a8, there are still 1001 variations and combos to explore. Coming back, there is another variation that appears to do the trick, and Wesley went for it. It was this rook move to c6. Should you remove this knight, this bishop also comes off, and after bishop b5, Houston, we have a problem. This pawn on e4 cannot be removed as it runs into a nasty check. And it's a check made after rook d8 and rook takes. And let's hear it before we do something else. So after rook c6, this piano repositioned the rook to keep this bishop protected and hopes to be able to arrest this guy on e5 without black being capable of capturing because we would have a checkmate on the back rank. The Wesley was not the player he is today. He knew exactly what he was doing. Before able to do anything, he opened up an escape path for his king. And when his piano came in with this response, this guy in the center came flying off. The knight on d7 is now exposed. The bishop on d6 is double attacked. And there is only one rook to cover. So what Nisi Piano did here was to pull this bishop to safety, exposing fully this knight. It's a very tricky position. You can do this by either explaining or just show. Right now, a rather show. Rook c7 takes and takes with the knight, and the end is in sight. After this rook check, this is a lethal blow. And depending on how black reacts here, we don't even need the knight. If king h6, after this rook check, we also have a checkmate, and let's hear it. In either case, if it's not a mate, the knight comes off, and this is now a matter of moves. Coming back, Wesley moved the knight to safety. Does rook d8 work here? It's one move too short. Bishop f5 check, and after black blocks, this knight on e4 is perfectly covered. Coming back again, is it piano? I had the pressure on this pawn, but this was an instant red flag. The question is, where is that red flag, and how does black take advantage? It was all about this hit on f2. If you take you get into this situation. And once the bishop comes off, this is another way to relatively easy win. Cipiano therefore was very wise not to touch the knight. He delivered this check, the king moved up the board, and it wasn't a bishop check on f5 because of g6, but the attack on the rook. Wesley went rook c2, which wasn't even necessary. When is a piano? When pawn grabbing, Wesley delivered this check, and though you would expect the knight to disappear, why didn't white take him? Okay, this is maybe easier than it is. The knight check on g4 picks up this bishop, and black has enough on the board to seal victory. Coming back, this is how Nisi Piano played it, and only when this knight made his way and presence felt, Nisi Piano get this position, a good thinking, and in this moment, resigned the game. Both played a brilliant game. And if it was not for a single move that went wrong, this game could have ended in three different ways. Bishop f4 is a big no-no, as it runs into this nasty fork. And because of the pin on the first, should you go king g2, not knight takes f4, but this rook check. Grab the knight, and once you experience this type of checkmate, how painful does this one look? It 
If rook d2, after this trade on f4, the rook also disappears, and we have the same type of story. Wesley in this game was most of the time on the defensive. He defended, defended, defended. And as soon as he found a way out, he attacked with a vengeance. And this is how he had beaten an opponent who was stronger than himself. Going back to this time, can anyone recall what happened in Group B? See, Piano finished in 10th place along with the only female competing, Anna Mosichuk. Wesley finished in 5th position. And in number 1, it was the Russian Dutch Hanish Kiri, who was then promoted to Group A with 9 out of 13 points. Group A names consisted of Shirov, Naka, Kramnik, Vishyanand, the Minister of Defense, Magnus, Fabi, Ivanchuk, and others. There is another game I would love to cover from Group B, and I will have this one reserved for some other time. And this was one of Wesley's games back in 2010. His style of play has changed over time, but he still follows some main principles. He's not confrontational, he's not aggressive, and most importantly, never rushes with anything he does. He's like a snake. He sits back and waits. Maybe I should have used the rattlesnake as an example. Found in only the Americas. They're by no means aggressive and will not attack humans unless they're provoked. If you hear them rattle, they do this to warn you they are about. If you step on them, by mistake, they will attack you to protect themselves. Well, it's just like a rattlesnake or very similar. Try and take advantage and it will strike back at you. And you said this channel is all about, only about chess. And something else before I go for today is this day is a historic one too. Does anyone know why? It's the only time and day an EU member state have decided to abandon the European Union. Okay, hope you enjoyed this very difficult game dating back to 2010 when Wesley was not even able to promote himself to the Masters class. For sure, I will be back with more. So until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.